again. Welcome to episode 7 of the infamous Claws and Convo. I am your host and producer, Striker Chiguar. And yes, Midwest Fur Fest happened. And it made big news, world news. Uh, there was a gas attack, chlorine gas. I will talk about that today. And give an overall recap of the convention. And uh, I want to get into today just how this chlorine, not only what we know of this chlorine attack, but how it's going to affect us as a fandom. And not only, you know, the attack itself, but the media coverage around it, and we've already seen some good news coverage and really shitty news coverage, um, and the former being actually more prevalent, luckily, but uh, yeah, so let's get some regular background music going our standard here in Psalm the music is free on they've got music on Bandcamp you want to check them out so but I digress so yeah it's been funny story it's actually been was uh, a rather interesting convention especially for uh, me, Tjerka, and Foxart. So, yeah, I was riding with Tjerka and Foxart, um, uh, and when, uh, we just got past Mount Pleasant, and, uh, the ball joint on Tjerka's Lincoln decided it was going to snap in half, and, uh, yeah, we, uh, ended up broke down the side of the road at like one in the morning on fr on real early Friday. Ended up call ended up having to call my mom, wake her up, and I, I got a ride back to my truck, and we ended up taking my Ranger, cramming the three of us in the front seat, and Jerka had we had Jerka's art supplies and stuff in every nook and cranny we could find in the cab and covered in the tarp with the tarp in the back. Uh, that was that was interesting. That was, it was a very interesting and very cramped trip Friday. But we managed to make it in one piece. And uh, it's, it kind of seems almost like an omen uh, considering what happened Sunday. So, yeah, we. You know, overall it was a pretty good time. We had a great time. I had a good time. Uh, it was my first time in the fursuit. And, uh. Yeah, we took out some pictures. Uh. 1100 so fursuiters in this picture. We had this room absolutely packed. And uh, ended up even breaking Anthrocon's numbers. So here I am with Dark Paw, uh, Space Weasel, um, Okami's in here somewhere. Um, and Devi is also hidden. I think that's her head right there. Here I am, being distracted by something shiny, apparently. Probably this guy. 
Um, but yeah, this was actually my first time in suit. Here we all are together here. Uh, we we're kind of going for a S Steven Seagal style lighting across the eye effect. Of course, I'm too tall for it, so... Yeah, but, uh, yeah, anyway. And, uh, so yeah, after Sunday's attack, we were all... After standing in the cold for a while, uh, we... We were pushed down the street to the... Yeah. Um, the Hilton. And, uh, we sat around there for a while, waiting for something to happen. Uh, the Hilton itself, yeah, Hilton actually deserves some kudos for, uh, you know, helping us out and, uh, letting us in, and uh, someone actually, I don't know if this is a hotel or an, one of the, uh, an individual, but, uh, someone opened up a room and gave out water and snacks for, uh, for everyone, so I was real good of him. And eventually, we were all herded into the convention center, where uh, where we were waiting till about one, about uh, four thirty or so. And people were people were tired. You know, everyone's pretty much been up for at least, you know. In some cases, like 18, 20 hours, people are sl sleeping on the floor and using the tails as pillows. There were like a whole bunch of ambulances. 19 people were sent to the. 19 people got rides in ambulances. I went to the hospital to get checked out. A couple cases were fairly serious. From what I've heard, some people were coughing up blood. Um, but uh, you know, from what uh, from what we know so far, everyone's everyone was released. Everyone came out okay. Uh, thankfully, you know, nothing over too serious. And uh, the rest of Sunday went on pretty much as scheduled. Uh, but now we're raising. Let's see. There are 1,132 uh, fursuiters in the parade. And uh, hold. To a total attendance of uh, four thousand, just over four thousand, right around four thousand six hundred attendees from fifteen different countries all across the United States, from the people from all fifty states. Uh, there were the charity Creator Camp Exotic Pet Sanctuary was able to raise eleven thousand dollars by charitable donations from attendants, and it did this, and then. Additional twenty thousand was do donated from Midwest Furry Fandom Incorporated, the parent 501c3 nonprofit corporation of Midwest Furfest, for a total of right around uh, thirty-one thousand dollars. And as usual, people cried. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. It's a little bit distracting. Um, so, and it was a, an amazing time, but, uh, so we're going to go ahead and go into the actual news, and, uh, the Associated Press, uh, has did a pretty good job of reporting on it. So here we go. 
Hotel guests donning animal costumes of all shapes and sizes were forced out onto the streets after a chlorine gas leak forced an evacuation of the Hyatt Regency O'Hare early Sunday morning. The source of the gas was apparently a chlorine powder left in the ninth floor stairwell of the hotel. I saw a couple of ambulances going and out of here I saw a fire truck so I figured something serious was probably going on and then the fire alarm went off and so everybody started leaving so. Investigators believe it was created intentionally and are treating it as a criminal matter. Furry fans attending the 2014 Midwest Fur Fest convention, also known as Andracon, were allowed to return a few hours later after the hotel had been decontaminated. Uh, we've been having a grand old time and we do not know what's going on at this time. Uh, we've been asked to leave the hotel for unknown uh, reasons, but we have a lot of costumers out here with big fluffy costumes that will keep people warm, so at this point we're not at all worried. By mid-morning, furries were pouring back in, celebrating animals given human characteristics through art, literature, and performance. 19 people who became nauseous or dizzy were treated at local hospitals, and at least 18 were released shortly thereafter. Emily Roseman, The Associated Press. Yeah, that, that's an example of some really some of the really good coverage we've had. And uh, actually, to be honest, surprisingly, uh, actually watched uh, Fox cover it and you know surprisingly it wasn't absolutely terrible as uh, as much as we all expected it to be uh, they were not like 100% accurate Fox is never accurate they did not really uh, they didn't really try but it wasn't terrible but uh Again, Associated Press did an excellent job of covering this, I think, and uh, so yeah. Then, of course, there was this morning. This lady. It's crazy. The Chicago this Tribune, lady. 19 people were hospitalized at a this is, furry This is terrible. In Illinois this after what's being this coverage here. Lake of Just West. watch. Furry. It's Can terrible. Did I get that wrong? Oh, gosh. Okay. Officials were called when I... Strong odor of chlorine... What? <laughs> Spread this? <laughs> I think they had to evacuate the building and everything. <laughs> Sent the hotel guests along with convention attendees into the cold night. Many still dressed in their furry, furry costumes. We have a lot of costumers out here with big fluffy costumes that'll keep people warm. So at this point, we're not at all worried. So we've been pulling people into a like a cuddle to like, no. warm the baby. No. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. And giving her our jackets and Thank blankets. You. Yes. We just told Mika what the convention was about. She's it's kept everybody warm. Was the good news? The hotel was Where are you going? contaminated. Hey, guests came back come inside back. at 4 a.m. Police still come back. The matter is a criminal could, could investigation. You, could you check? Could you check on Mika? See if she's okay. She's over there somewhere. Still ahead, we have the morning Joe. Yeah, that that story actually made almost as much news as the original story. Due to the sheer unprofessional nature of uh, this reporter person, the Young Turks and the Young Turks actually tore her a new one. So, yeah, well deserved. Uh, yeah, that's that's not that's not so great the reporting there. Yeah, real professionals over there in Morning Joe. Yeah, real freaking yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, that uh, <clears throat> that's what happened uh, between the ninth and tenth floor. Someone busted a, a glass jar of chlorine powder, and girls uh, were stuck outside for most of the morning. My legs were hurting, but uh, you know, a lot of the fursuits were still in fursuit, and uh, those who were. Well, made the best of it, and that made it a whole lot easier for everyone else there. Made it bearable.
so uh <clears throat> yeah we don't really know much so far uh the uh Rosemont police have deemed this a criminal act as uh, one would expect uh it may turn out may end up being a terrorist um, it may be considered a terrorist attack um <clears throat> A domestic, a case of domestic terrorism, perhaps. Uh, of course, that's questionable whether it really counts as terrorism. But then again, people were, though not seriously hurt, people were hurt in this event, and it could have been a lot worse. But fortunately, you know, the evacuation was absolutely textbook. It was very a very professional evacuation. Everyone was calm, and and every, you know everyone was helping out smoothly. And you know every, all the furries there were did a good job of just make sure everything was going smoothly. Everyone was calm and. Uh, you know, made orderly, got out and quick and orderly. And all the uh, first responders, the hotel staff, the volunteers, the MF, the con staff, everyone did a fantastic job. Uh, everyone was professional, as I said. It was, now this. This is, you know, this is a kind of evacuation that, uh, you know, should you know, be considered, you know, like I said, it's textbook. It's just nothing went wrong with the evacuation. It was flawless. It's just... There, there, there are no words to describe how well executed the evacuation was. It was just perfect for evacuation. Everyone was quick and calm, and uh, yeah, and it goes without saying. Everyone was awesome about it. You know the. And uh, you know, the uh, hazmat team was were uh, did a good job of cleaning up uh, all of the EMTs and everyone, just everyone. I just can't can't say enough for how well they did to get everyone out safely and briskly. And uh, it really says a lot about fur about us too. I uh, you know furries. You know we work together. We watch over. We watch each other's back. You know we help each other out. And uh, and that really should it really showed on Sunday morning. And it does really does say a lot about us. So. Yeah, everyone who was there, just awesome job, everyone. And yeah, we can't really, you know, we can't really say much about uh, people who were checked out at the hospital. We don't know exactly what conditions they were in when they got there, but uh, they were big. They were released, as far as I'm aware, and uh, yeah, we do have a okay, so we. We do have a list of people who are treated and discharged. Um, we 
episode. Yeah, everyone was indeed discharged. Um, and let's see here. Hazel, Hazel Panda, uh, Cool, Calm Cam, uh, uh, Report Coughing Up Blood. Couldn't breathe. Couldn't taste anything but chlorine. Certain uh, hit match seven. We had a burning sensation. And skin cow couldn't even breathe. Uh, so yeah, people were affected by chlorine. These are definitely chlorine effects of chlorine exposure, but they recovered. And they were released, and it came out okay. So this is definitely good news. Good to see. And uh, most of them were released on Sunday, so they were able to enjoy the rest of the convention. Very drowsy, but nonetheless. Of course, fire alarms at Midwest Fest isn't a new thing, but not very often is it a real thing. In, in this case, it was real. So, and there is an article uh, here in Flare uh, that I'm actually reading right now. So, check that out if you like. Link in the chat. Uh, let's check out Axio Wolves. <laughs> Get a broadcast to the live stream here. So, oh, goody! I got my live broadcast working. Now when this, well, when the ev evacuation happened, of course, I was in fro suit, and uh, I couldn't see shit. I was, you know, I was just kind of feeling my way around in the darkness. I had, at one point I was I had my pawn Debbie's shoulder trying to and she was guiding me through the crowd and I was just navigation was real difficult in a pretty sweet head in the at dark. Yeah, as you can see A lot of people were in fur suits, and they were definitely making the most of it, and uh, really lifting people's spirits just by being there in suit. Most adorable evacuation in history. Now there's rumors of there were rumors of uh, a, of uh, meth labs and yeah they 
right now they're figuring out that it is was chlorine. Some thought it was like a like the building had like a internal water water treatment system. Um, people are thinking that was it. That the building itself. The Hyatt's water filtration system had a leak or something. That was one rumor. But you know, we wouldn't find out till later that it was a deliberate uh, jar full of chlorine powder smashed in the stairwell. Yes. Oh, Emergency um, services. Handling the situation. What's dangerous about chlorine is uh, if it gets in your lungs, it'll cause fluid to build up inside your lungs and it will cause you to drown. You'll drown on dry land. Chlorine is some nasty shit. Evacuation in history. That's pretty much the. Uh, that's pretty much the environment for the uh, first hour or so before we start moving into the Hilton. So that momentarily we were allowed back in for uh, like maybe five, ten minutes. That court key. Uh, it was a very brief time we were allowed back in, but uh, 
Soon after, we were, it was determined that it was indeed not safe. It's pandemonium. <laughs> he made a pun. So yeah. The hotel is not clear. We can only go into the dance floor and the lower convention area. I guess it's just because there's too many of us. Cirque. Hi. Nice job there, dude. Thank you. Well, you know, someone has to yell really loud, and I'm good at it. So tomorrow I'm going to pew. <laughs> what you say, I'm doing a live YouTube rocket. I don't want to tell you about the things that are already in the phone. Oh, this is going oh wait, you were there. <laughs> so this is the... In the first... A false all clear. <laughs> you know, really, at this point, no one was really sure what was going on. It seemed to be. Seems to be clear. Fire truck. Police vehicles. Two, three, four, five fire trucks. Uh, a couple ambulances. I think this was before it was escalated to a three alarm emergency. Hazmat. This is before Let's Hazmat shows up. I think. I don't think Hazmat was on the scene just yet. Yep. From inside and outside. Get out! Oh no! They're kicking everybody out again? Out again! Yeah! Oh my gosh. So yeah, we're. This is nuts. Uh, now people are being re evacuated. Alright, so I guess they revoked their access back to the lower I was, levels of the con. At this time, I was. Now uh, we are all moving back out away from the building. No. I'm, and now at this point I'm heading out. And shortly we're shortly after this yeah, we're pushed to the Hilton. They're kicking everyone back out again. I back across the street, I don't know. Well, time to venture across the street again. Groggy was the one that was actually oh, important. Oh, oh, oh. No. <laughs> I figured it wasn't the I case. Walked, I walked past you in the, in the episode. Yeah. I don't know you, but you look warm. Can I hug you? Sure. Sweet. Sure. You're not warm, are you? Huh? He's warmer than I am. Oh, and I guarantee you are. <laughs> I'm wearing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Stay hugging. Stay hugging. <laughs> I'm doing a live broadcast to YouTube right now. I feel so bad. I got 23 Jesus. people watching my video. 23 people? Okay. Yeah, MFM! 
Evacuation 2014. Yes, 2014. <laughs> <laughs> it smells here. It, it does kind of smell. Actually, I can smell it. You're right. Yeah. We're kind of standing on the curb for a bit. I'm not gonna stick around where I smell gas. I swear I didn't do it. <laughs> Yo, what are you doing throwing your nothing. bombs everywhere? <laughs> oh my god. If they blow up, everything blows up. <laughs> oh dang. Oh gosh, my name is. These are super cute, by the way. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, we were having fun doing a suit swap. Yeah. Just, yeah, that kind of went down a hole. Yeah, you're still suit swap there, right? Okay. Yeah, but we're standing outside. Yeah, outside. And he has with feet. indoor feet. Oh, he has foam feet. That's all oh, so shit. No way. It's, 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 it's pretty cold. Though. Well, it's cold, and I don't want to fuck up his feet. So. Yeah. <laughs> shit. Well, sorry about that. But the foam is worth it. Yeah, I've been avoiding it. tried to hurt It's like the fire truck's moving out. You get a battery? No, no, I'm gonna run out of time. I can only do a 15 minute post. Oh. Yeah. Let's do another one. I think I'm still handing some for the uh, fire truck just out in the distance there. I don't know. It's like, what was that suit with glasses? I'm like, is that Dr. Fox? No. No, it was a. Everyone in the hotel who's not part of the con right now. Yeah. Because now they're stuck outside like, what the fuck is this? Right? <laughs> <laughs> they have nothing to do with it. No. Yeah. They have nothing Harry's to do with it. Harry's doing everything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's confirmed yet. Nothing's confirmed yet. Really? Mass decontamination. Really? And there's Hazmat going in. I just don't see why they would have a green gas line running through. So People were thinking like water purification stuff. Yeah. Or, or even like, like I said, just Dorito and Wade. Mm. Oh, it's so easy to make. Oh, we, we well, got somebody in front of us. Well, some. Uh... So, yeah, shortly after that happened, uh, we were pushed further away from the building and the secret refuge in the Hyatt or not the Hyatt the uh, the Hilton uh, whose staff d does deserve props for uh, handling the influx and uh, make sure everyone was okay uh, uh, meanwhile the Midwest Fur Fest website is currently down uh, but uh, just a redirect page on the uh, uh, on the front here with a press release. So again, not much is known. We're not. Sh no one's really sure who might have uh, uh, caused it. Yeah, there are rumors. Uh, like I said, you know, some rumored that it might have been uh, someone making meth, which uh, I don't think is very likely. Yeah, uh, judging by the uh, uh, judging by the uh, you know, the uh, bladder of the uh, chlorine powder. Uh, I don't have I don't have the image here but uh, I have seen the image and uh, it's pretty obvious that uh, the jar was thrown from the 10th floor and it shattered and it went everywhere it had some velocity 
and it was an obvious it was obviously an intentional um, so that's, that's all we can really say at this point is that it was intentional as far as who did it you know some you know, there's a lot of rumors but we can't really say anything but uh yeah, the uh, <coughs> email, Claude, the uh, Skype line is open if you want to kind of ch uh, chime in on this, uh, if you've got anything to add. But, uh, I mean, well, I'm going to, I'm going to take a little short break and we'll, when we return, we will talk a little bit about how this will affect us as a fandom. No, sit around. We will return.
Welcome back. That's Tian Sam. Uh, their music is on Bandcamp. Tian Sam. dot Bandcamp. dot com. Uh, you can see in the ticker in the corner. Good music worth checking out. Worth downloading. I want you to check out their new album. Seven bucks. Well worth it. Anyway, we're back from the short little break. And uh, we're going to go deep into what this whole gas attack means for the fandom. Uh, as we've discussed, this was definitely... Uh, this was clearly a deliberate uh, attack. And... Uh, you know, the intent, the actual intent is unknown. The... Uh, and there's no, we don't yet have any leads to exactly who did it, but we can conclude that they are a douchebag, douchebags. So, yeah, we can pretty much agree on that. And uh, whatever their intent was, it. We can, I believe it is safe to say that uh, it has backfired. Yes, they have hurt people. Yes, it was uh, serious. They survived. And a serious event like this, you know, it. Now, once we get through it, it can only make us stronger. Now it's... Yeah. That's 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 it. You know, we're stronger after this. And I think uh, I think we're. Uh, by the way, Skype line is open if you want to want to uh, Skype in and talk about it. Uh, Class and Convo is the handle, as uh, shown in the stream description. But uh, you know, it. Now this this was this was a cowardly act by cowardly individuals. I couldn't face the reality. They chose to blindly attack us. In their arrogance. If only made us stronger as a community. I've given us more attention. And yep. We can all sit around here and whine about having too much attention from the media. You know, we could we could just you know, we could make a big deal out of just being exposed by the media that has the same media that has for decades torn us asunder. But that doesn't get us anywhere. Complaining about media doesn't get us anywhere. And in light of these recent attacks, I think everyone, 
any anyone who ha who sees 19 people have been hospitalized as a part of any any no news story. Now, when people are hurt, empathy will kick in. Everyone has empathy. Well, most people have empathy. And yet, no matter how the media wants to betray us, empathy, when they say people are hurt, when people are attacked, that's not going to sit well with anyone. Doesn't matter what you thought of the fandom previously, it just doesn't sit right. That people were harmed for no reason, without warrant, without completely unprovoked. Now it doesn't matter who you are. I mean, I mean that reporter on the Daily Show that giggled and laughed off, ran off set. That. We, we see every other media outlet worth its worth its salt is gonna look at that particular event and you know, let's call it for what it is an unprofessional lack of empathy on the part of this lady uh, on the Morning Joe show where every media outlet is going is calling this lady out for that. Well, most, most outlets, anyway. All right. No, this is uh, really. And you know, what I. I think we can determine from this is that uh, it's really cameras getting out of focus here. Hang on, we gotta refocus my camera manually. There we go. That's better. But uh, we can really what we can take from this is uh, now it's re if you really think about it, it's kind of uh, it's regression to the mean. Regressing to the mean. You know, yeah, we've had really bad uh, publicity in the past, but you know, it all you know comes back to the average. It all tends to fall back to the average. Regressing to the mean. Mean. So it's just that's just the way things work. But uh, even so, yeah, we've the media. You know, yeah, sure, sure, they want to get views, but they obviously, you know, there's there's no way of walk, waltzing around empathy. And we report on a story where people get hurt, then it doesn't matter how you spin it. People getting hurt. Um, I mean, like I said, it doesn't sit right with people. Mostly. And from that, our know, curiosity kind of brings about a uh, a second look at uh, this thing that. You know, people don't really understand. People are going to look into this. 
Be curious, who are these people? Why are they getting hurt? Why are people hurting? Who's hurting them? Why Why are they hurting them? You know, it, it's a natural curiosity to find out why. And it's a type of curiosity that you know, kind of been lost in most... In, one one way or another, but it still lies deep within the human psyche, and it's and you know the uh, what happened Saturday or what happened Sunday morning. It's going to is really starting to bring that out again. And people going, people will be looking into this. Now we can already see that you know, MFF website uh, is currently down right now due to the, the high traffic. It just just out cold. And uh, that, and it's been down for a uh, all week. So that, that just shows how, that people are genuinely curious about what happened, and it, you know, and it made global news, international. So a lot of people are looking into this. A lot of people are curious, and this is a good thing. And uh, we're, what I think is going to come out of this is a good deal of public support. It's not going to be mind-blowing amounts of public support, but it's going to be public support nonetheless. We are going to be recognized as a thing. Now that's, you know, really, in a way, it's sort of a turning point. is a uh, can't think of the term I'm looking for yeah it's definitely definitely a turning point for uh, you know, our the furry community and our image and you know whoever committed these atrocity you know, in the long run, they failed. They failed. And, uh... You know, sooner or later, they're going to be found. And, uh, they're going to... They're going to face... The consequences of their actions. hate to see things happen like see them it's always terrible seeing things like this happen but you know, I think in this case there is a silver lining to this particular cloud that silver lining is a betterment. A better understanding of who we are. Shut up phone, I'm talking to people. Gotta silence this thing.
So where was I? I lost my train of thought. Um. So yeah, the uh, people who committed these this act of domestic terrorism, if you can call it that, uh, you know, this, you know, they hurt people. They have threatened serious harm. People could have died. Some, a few people came damn close to death. Too close. And they're going to have a lot of trouble coming their way. And they should know this. Whoever they are. You done fucked up. Fucked up bad. And we're gonna find you. And you're going to pay for your crime. One way or another. Anon ain't got shit on the furries. We will find you. We're everywhere. Police, firefighters, first responders, EMTs, pilots, chefs, Engineers, scientists, we could be standing right behind you right now. We could be your neighbor. Ah, oh, I'm not chat. Ah, oh, hell. Well, the stream just died. That's lovely. I'm gonna try to restart this thing. Hopefully it'll work again. Don't do this, come on. stream is now dead. connection The stream does appear to be dead right now. Give a minute. Oh, okay, we're back. Okay, we just had a little bit of a hiccup there, but we're back. As I was saying, basically to whoever did, whoever attacked uh, the convention, for oh, fuck's sake. It's, this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just going. I'm just going to try and continue this offline. And see how much I can actually do here. Ah, <sighs> yeah, stream is dead right now. It's just <laughs> nope. You can't have. Okay, it, it's very. It's not working well. It looks like we're back, maybe momentarily. Hopefully, it stays up. I mean, where was I? Oh, yeah. <sighs> so, yeah, the. Uh, yeah, we'll find you. We'll. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Cloning, bombing, Korean attack. Yeah, it, it just made us stronger. It's, uh... No, it's, it, you know, things like, it's events like this that, uh... You know, kind of remind us that, you know, we are family. You know, we are... We are the family that, you know, we dig the other and we... We watch each other's back. We're, you know, we're there for each other. Not many other, you know, fandoms or subcultures can say that. And it's what makes us very unique. Hopefully the whole hiccup and the connection didn't cut out too much. But uh, yeah, this will all be recorded and put up on YouTube. Closing ceremonies, they're very, they were very special this year. And not only the huge sum of money we raised for charity, huge attendance, record breaking, uh, we broke records. But uh, you know, recapping on the uh, atrocities aforementioned, you know, the board came to the decision on next year's theme. Next year's theme will be Midwest Fair Fest. And I could not think of a more suiting theme. We don't need a theme. We are the theme. We're furries. We are us. And I'm, and I, yeah. And that, that, that was a wonderful moment when we found out that we don't need a theme for next year. We are the theme for next year. That's big fuck you in the face of the assholes who committed this crime. If you can fuck with us, thank again. And in the end, we are. And always will be a family. Brothers, sisters of the fur.
united not in blood, but in spirit. We are one. We are legion. And don't you forget it. We are a family. And you don't fuck with our family. Do not fuck with this family. You hear me? So... <sighs> oh yeah, that's uh... No, it's so... The regular crap. Now, we all... Everyone did... Was very professional in the evacuation. And... It, the uh, the investigation is ongoing. Uh, hopefully next week we'll have a little bit more information. Uh, but n until then, you know, that's been Midwest Bear Fest. So. Yeah, I hope to see you, everyone who can make it next year. I can guarantee you that I will be there. And we've come out of the stronger. And our past has taught us many things. And we've had enough. But, yeah. <sighs> so, now let's let's wrap this episode up, shall we? And something disconnects itself from my computer with. And I know I have no idea what that was that disconnected. Something. Probably something important. But I don't care. Uh so yeah, this uh that pretty much brings a close to Oh, that was my camera that disconnected. Why did my camera disconnect? Oh well. Um Yeah. So yeah, this concludes episode seven. Uh, remember to check out class in convo dot strikepod dot com. Uh, donate or become a patron if you really want to see more. If you're really enjoying this, for some reason I don't know why you would enjoy it, but nonetheless, uh, support the show and subscribe to Strikepod Studios on YouTube. Uh, that is our official YouTube channel. Um, all, all the information you need is on clausenconvo.strikepaw.com uh, all the information is in the stream description below um, blah 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 if you want to you know, send in your feedback and uh, uh, catch us every Friday at uh, 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock central time Right here in first stream only on first stream, and uh, yeah. Let's see what else is there anything else I need to talk about? Not really. So until then, rock hard, live free, keep it true. I'll see you later. <laughs>